Student agency implies having the ability and the will to positively influence one's life and the world around them. The capacity to set a goal, reflect, and act responsibly to effect change. This video is about a team of six amazing elementary school students who demonstrated student agency by using the design thinking methodology within an authentic learning context to bring positive change to their school community. They were introduced with a challenge that Ms. Colley, our summer semester director, shared with me. She shared with me that there's a non-aggressive adolescent male macaque who likes to visit the elementary school. The goal for the week was to see what positive change or influence our team could bring within this context. What could they do to help with the situation? In particular, how will they keep both the monkey and the students at our school safe and healthy? To learn more about the context of this macaque challenge, we generated some interview questions and then set up a time to meet with Ms. Colley. During the interview, she discussed that the main reason the macaque was visiting the school was for food. We learned that the adolescent male likes to visit the cafeteria and even searches for food in the rubbish. Students also learned that it has specific spots or areas it likes to visit in the school. It also seems to like being around elementary students because of their excitement, uh, maybe because it is an adolescent male. And last, if the macaque gets uh, more bold or even aggressive, it would need to be placed uh, in another forest in the country. After gaining some insight on the context of the challenge, I wanted to have the team gain an understanding of the creating problem solving process that they were going to embark on. So I introduced a case study, a true story that depict the different practices of design thinking and how powerful empathy is within the creative problem solving process. The case study was about an innovation architect who initially created an MRI scanner that horrified potentially ill sick children. Uh, he then created this version after doing some empathy work, an MRI scanning adventure experience that resulted in children wanting to go on what they thought was like an amusement park ride over and over again. All of this was the result of the innovation architect simply empathizing with his end users, the children. After learning about the power of empathy in creative problem solving, we filled out a CI graphic organizer on the concept of empathy. An organizer I got from Julie Stern, a leader in conceptual understanding. CI stands for State, Elaborate, Exemplify, and Illustrate. Students stated the definition, wrote the definition in their own words, provided an example, and then drew a picture of what empathy looks like. We then discussed as a team, who would we need to empathize with within this context? Who would we be problem solving for, designing for? Based on what we learned from Ms. Colley, uh, the macaques seemed to only visit the elementary school and not the high school. So we thought that we would need to see this context through the eyes of the elementary school students, since they are the most likely to encounter the monkey. Luckily, our team consisted of elementary school students. So we generated some interview questions um, that the team members could ask each other to get a general understanding of the perspective of what elementary stu students thought or felt about the macaque and what their reaction would be if they encountered the monkey. Through the interview, there were some interesting insights. We had students who were fearful that the monkey will attract more monkeys. Uh, one student felt pity for the monkey because he felt bad that the monkey had to come to the school to get food, knowing that wild animals are living in smaller and smaller habitats. One student was annoyed because he thought the monkey might be uh, doing mischievous things. And the majority of the students stated that uh, they would be scared if they were to encounter the monkey because of the unpredictability of wild animals. Next, we went through all the information uh, we collected through the interviews and then identified themes. The first two obvious themes were food and health. The macaque's reason for visiting the school is food, and there were concerns for its health based on the fact it was eating human food. Second was safety. There was a sense from both Miss Colley and the students that the encounters between the monkey and the students uh, might be unpredictable. So using the question starter, what can we do the students developed this problem statement. What can we do to not scare the monkey based on the unpredictability of the animal? Have it stay safe with the students in mind as well so it doesn't get taken away and have a good life. 
Next, we brainstorm different ideas on what we can do to keep both the monkey and the student safe. We first did a quick brainstorming activity called Party Planner that I got from a friend of mine, Ellen, who is also a design thinking leader. In this activity, students learned about uh, using the improv yes and response when sharing ideas rather than the yes but response uh, to learn more about the power of building upon the ideas of others. We also discussed the importance of deferring judgment when engaging in divergent thinking within our brainstorming sessions. After brainstorming ideas, uh, focusing on quantity and not quality, we grouped our ideas into categories. Two categories quickly cut our eye. One set of ideas involved creating a specific area for the monkey to access food from a feeder, an area that would be away from the school and people. The other set of ideas involved educating students and teachers on what to do when they encounter a macaque and what they can do to keep the macaque safe and healthy. Educating people through a poem, pamphlet, a sign, a speech, poster, and video. Now, I also got in contact with Acres, an organization in Singapore whose mission is to create a caring, socially responsible society where animals are treated as sentiment beings. One of their objectives is to educate people on lifestyle choices which do not involve the abuse of animals and which are environmentally friendly. With this in mind, I thought it would be a great opportunity for the students to interview the Acres uh, staff members to learn more about the macaques, but also get some feedback uh, for the ideas that they came up with. Here are some of the things we learned from the staff members. They confirmed what we learned earlier, that the reason the macaque is visiting the school was that it is trying to find food. But again, the human food it finds is quite unhealthy for the monkey. In addition, macaques are mostly scared of humans and they will do a fake lunge if they feel fear. Hearing our idea about educating students and teachers, the Acres members uh, made some suggestions on what people should know and do when they encounter a macaque. Keep your distance from the macaque. Make sure to not get close when you take pictures of the animal. Do not ever touch a monkey. And this goes with any wild animal. In addition, we should keep all food and plastic bags away from the macaque. We shouldn't be holding food or plastic bags in our hands when we are around the monkey. If you encounter a monkey in close proximity and are scared, widen your distance as much as possible. If you need to walk past, just do so slowly and calmly, with no screaming and without turning your back to the monkey. In the second part of the ideate phase, students use convergent thinking. Using critical thinking to solve a problem, they consciously use standards or probabilities to make judgments. Our standards that helped to make our judgments uh, was the safety and health of the students and the macaque. As a team, we discussed whether or not we should uh, use the ideas we came up with about creating an isolated spot for a feeder. We shared these ideas with Ms. Kali, who stated her concern that a feeder may bring more monkeys to the school area and also could alter the uh, macaque's feeding behaviors. We also learned from Acres that it is actually illegal to feed wildlife in Singapore. As a team, we discussed why this would be illegal. One student stated that the wild animals will start seeking out humans going into areas outside of their habitat. He also added that the animals could get aggressive uh, towards humans if they don't receive food from them. So through this discussion and critical thinking process, the team decided on focusing their efforts on educating others instead of the feeders. Initially, students were asking themselves, how will they um, educate students and teachers in keeping both themselves and the macaque safe and healthy? They came up with creating posters, writing a poem, designing a pamphlet to educate people. One student even thought up the idea of creating a lesson to teach her peers about macaque safety training and a slide deck that uh, she can use during that lesson. But before we got into the how, it was important for them to identify the what. What information uh, would they teach? What information would they share? Using the notes from the interviews and using uh, online resources for research, the team outlined what they wanted to share and teach. With this outline, the team then started to create their content. One team of students created their own short educational films using iMovie. Another team of students used Apple's Keynote to create two digital posters. And another team of students planned a lesson and created a teacher slide deck using Google Slides. 
Not only did they add information about the macaques and what they can do to stay safe during encounters, but they also added a reflection piece, as well as a storybook that incorporates Chinese and mathematics. Finally, we had our webmasters create a website using Google Sites to house the team's content. Throughout this process, myself and the team continuously provided valuable feedback to one another to help improve content creation. It was really great to be able to share our website with Acres and Miss Collie. I hope to put up the girls' posters um, at the start of the next school year, as well as share the website to the faculty so that they can share it with their students. Design thinking can be one approach students can use to engage in agency, a scaffolded creative problem solving methodology where students gain the capacity to set a goal, reflect, and act responsibly to effect change. I have to say I was blown away by this team. I am truly honored that I got to work with them for a week. Special thanks to Ms. Kali, Jocelyn, and the Acres staff members for making this whole learning experience possible. And of course, I want to thank the wonderful team of empathetic creative problem solvers.